Hello students, welcome to the session. We will continue our discussion of PHH501 Atomic and Molecular Physics. In the previous session, we were discussing about X-rays, their production properties and so on. While talking about their properties, we reiterated that there are three properties of X-rays as far as interaction with matter is concerned. We saw the first one that is the photoelectric absorption. The next property we will see is the OJA shower or the OJA effect. So, as you can see in this diagram, what happens is whenever a very high speed electron comes and knocks out an inertial electron because they are travelling with such high velocity, there is a vacancy that is created there. This electron that is emitted outside is the OJA electron. The electrons in the outer orbits, they come and occupy this inner valency and this process goes on. When an electron from the higher orbit comes into a lower orbit, that is when radiation is produced in the form of an X-ray photon. So, this is one of the ways in which X-rays are produced actually. Now, sometimes it so happens that the electrons knock out the valence shell electrons. When the valence shell electrons are knocked out, then such a shower is called an OJA shower and such electrons are called OJA electrons. So, as you can see in this diagram, a photon is being incident and it knocks out an inner shell electron and if electrons from the outer shells come into this electron shell, they emit X-ray photons in this process. Sometimes it so happens that valence electrons are themselves knocked out and these electrons that come out are called OJA electrons and this effect is called the OJA effect. Moving on, Compton scattering which was another way in which uh, X-rays interact with matter. So, what happens in Compton scattering is the X-rays and matter interact in such a way that the X-rays impart only a part of its energy to matter and then they scatter off and because they have imparted some energy, they become elongated in wavelength. So, the wavelength of the X-rays increases and a part of its energy is transmitted to the matter with which it interacts. So, on that level, Compton scattering is one of the predominant interactions between X-rays and soft tissue. So, this is why it is highly effective in medical imaging techniques. Compton scattering is an inelastic scattering like I already said because it is imparting a parts of its energy. So, therefore, it is an inelastic scattering process of X-rays and part of the photon energy which is transferred to the scattering electron and the atom goes to an excited state. When the electron is knocked out of this atom, it comes out with some kinetic energy and the outgoing X-ray photon has got a longer wavelength as a result. Conservation of energy and momentum are of course hold, holding true here and we can analyze this uh, process by using the famous klein nishina formula. The next process in which X-ray matter interaction takes place is the Rayleigh scattering. As you know, Rayleigh scattering is an elastic scattering process where energy exchange or interaction is not there, only momentum conservation happens. Now, Rayleigh scattering is very, very dominant elastic mechanism in the X-ray regime for lower energy X-rays. Now, inelastic forward scattering gives rise to some sort of a refractive index. It is as if the X-rays bend. And uh, usually because uh, X-ray photons have such high energy, the refractive index is almost one, slightly lesser than one you could say. You can see in this image, a Compton scattering is shown. An incident X-ray photon of wavelength lambda sub i is incident on a target electron which is initially at rest. Once the X-ray photon collides with this electron so to speak, the electron recoils with some final energy and velocity and the X-ray photon having imparted some energy lessens in frequency. As a result, its wavelength becomes longer and it comes out as the scattered outgoing photon of wavelength lambda sub f. This process is called Compton effect and the scattering of X-rays as a result of interaction with matter, this inelastic process is Compton scattering. The formula is uh, delta lambda that is change in wavelength of the X-ray photon is equal to H over M sub naught C times 1 minus cosine of theta where theta is the scattering angle, H is the well known Planck's constant 
m sub 0 is the rest mass of the electron, c of course is the velocity of light. So, this is one kind of interaction which x-rays undergo with matter. Now, we have been discussing about uh, the properties of x-rays, their history and uh, origin and all that. Let us now look at how x-rays are produced. So, whenever charged particles, electrons, ions and such, they have sufficiently high energy and they collide with the material, x-rays are produced. So, that is a very crude way of how x-rays are produced. X-rays can be generated by using a Crookes tube or a discharge vacuum tube, which has got a very high voltage to accelerate the electrons that are coming out as cathode rays. And when these high energy electrons which are accelerated to very, very high degrees of potential, they collide with the target anode, that is when the x-rays are created. Usually the target is a high melting point crack resistant material like tungsten, sometimes also alloys like uh, rhenium with 5 percent and tungsten of 95 percent are used, molybdenum is also used. Uh, usually copper is used for uh, crystallography experiments as a target and so on, different materials with different requirements. Now, when the electrons hit this target, the x-rays that are created are of two different processes. One is the characteristic emission and the other is the Bremsstrahlung. We will see what these are because these are important. Before that, if you see this diagram, this shows a Crookes tube or a discharge tube and this is vacuum sealed to a very, very, very low pressure and uh, the electrons that are produced from the cathode are accelerated to very, very, very high energies and these high speed electrons hit a target and when they hit the target that is when the x-rays are produced. So, this is roughly how x-rays are produced because of the cathode emission which hits the anode target. Moving on. So, characteristic x-ray emission sometimes also called X-ray electroluminescence. So, basically what happens is when the cathode ray electrons that are hitting the target, when they have sufficiently high energy, they knock out the orbital electrons from the inner shells. When that happens, the electrons from the higher energy levels, they come down to the lower energy vacancy of that particular electron and in this process, because it comes from a higher orbit to a lower orbit, it emits radiation and that radiation is in the region of x-rays because we are talking about inner shell electrons. So, electrons from outer energy coming down to this shell gives rise to energy which is somewhere in the region of x-rays. And if the x-rays that are produced are from the L, M, N subshells to the k-shell, such spectra are called k-line spectra. Similarly, for the L shell, if electrons come down to the L shell, then they are called L lines and so on and so forth. Now, suppose the transition is a 2p to 1s kind of a transition, it is subscripted with an alpha. If it is a 3p to 1s kind of a transition, it is subscripted by a beta. So, k sub alpha, k sub beta, L sub alpha and so on and so forth. Now, the thing is the frequency of these x-ray spectra, the lines that are emitted, they depend on the material that has been used as the target. So, the material's characteristic decides what kind of x-rays, what frequencies of x-rays are produced and that is the reason why such x-ray emissions are called characteristic x-ray lines. We will discuss more about the other kind of radiation in the next session. For now, thank you.